Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am providing this briefing on behalf of the High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, Ms. Izumi Nakamitsu. Since the last briefing to the Security Council on this topic on 14 June 2024, the provision of military assistance and transfers of arms and ammunition to the armed forces of Ukraine has continued in the context of the full-scale invasion of that country launched by the Russian Federation on 24 February 2022 in violation of the UN Charter and international law. According to publicly available information, these transfers have reportedly included heavy conventional weapons, such as battle tanks, armored combat vehicles, combat aircraft, helicopters, large caliber artillery systems, missile systems, and uncrewed combat aerial vehicles, as well as remotely operated munitions and small arms and light weapons and their ammunition. They have also included anti-personnel mines and cluster munitions. In addition, there have been reports of states transferring or planning to transfer weapons such as uncrewed aerial vehicles, ballistic missiles, and ammunition to the Russian armed forces and that these weapons have been used in Ukraine. Any transfer of weapons and ammunition must take place consistently with the applicable international legal framework, including, of course, relevant Security Council resolutions. Reports related to the use of cluster munitions and widespread contamination with mines and explosive remnants of war in Ukraine are worrying. Mines and explosive ordnance directly threaten civilians caught up in the armed conflict around the world, including in Ukraine. Even after fi fighting ends, these deadly devices can contaminate communities for decades to come, posing a daily and deadly danger to society and hampering reconstruction efforts. The universal participation in and the full implementation of the Convention on the Prohibition of the Use, Stockpiling, Production, and Transfer of Anti-Personnel Mines and on their Destruction, and the Convention on Cluster Munitions, and the Convention on Prohibitions or Restrictions on the Use of Certain Conventional Weapons must therefore remain a priority. Mr. President, the influx of weapons and ammunition into places where armed conflicts are ongoing can contribute to escalation and present significant risk of diversion and proliferation even after the conflict has ended. Measures to address the risk of diversion of weapons and ammunition are key for preventing further instability and insecurity in Ukraine. Such efforts will also be essential to post-conflict recovery. To prevent the diversion of arms and ammunition, supply chain transparency and cooperation and information exchange between importing, transit, <coughs> and exporting states are required. Diversion risks exist at each stage of the life cycle of a weapon, including manufacture, before and during transfer, post-delivery storage in stockpiles, and end use or disposal. Concrete counter-diversion measures include enhancement of marking, record keeping and tracing practices, comprehensive pre 
transfer diversion risk assessments, and user certificates, including non-transfer clauses, post-shipment verifications, and diversion monitoring and analysis. In June, states met to review progress made in the implementation of the Program of Action on Small Arms and Light Weapons and its international tracing instrument. They expressed collective concern about escalating tensions, crises, and conflicts aggravated by the illicit trade of these weapons, which heightened the risks of diversion of small arms and light weapons to unauthorized recipients. States adopted by consensus action-oriented measures for 2024 to 2030 in order to prevent, combat, and eradicate the illicit trade in small arms and light weapons throughout their life cycle. All states should now implement these commitments and other related commitments, including those in the global framework for through life conventional ammunition management, as well as the obligations under all instruments to which they are a party to prevent the diversion of arms and regulate international arms trade, such as the Arms Trade Treaty, the protocol against the illicit manufacturing of and trafficking in firearms, their parts and components and ammunition, known as the Firearms Protocol. Mr. President, since 24 February 2022, the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights has recorded 34,658 civilian casualties with 11,430 killed and 23,228 injured in Ukraine. The actual figures are likely to be considerably higher. According to the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, 72% of civilian casualties in June occurred as a result of artillery shelling, multiple launch rocket systems, and aerial bombardments, while 26% were caused by missile and loitering munition strikes. It is deeply concerning that the number of casualties among children in June is the highest in 2024. The use of armed on crude aerial vehicles and missiles continues to cause civilian deaths and injuries, as well as damage to civilian infrastructure. The Secretary General condemned the 8th June missile attacks by the Russian Federation, hitting residential and civilian infrastructure across Ukraine. The strike reportedly killed dozens of civilians, including children, and injured over 150 more. The incidents in which missiles hit the Okmadit National Children's Specialized Hospital in Kyiv, the largest pediatrics facility in Ukraine, and at another medical facility in the capitals Niprovsky district are particularly concerning. In addition, there have also been reports of an increasing number of cross-border strikes using missiles and uncrewed aerial vehicles by Ukraine inside the Russian Federation, with some, according to the Russian authorities, reportedly resulting in civilian casualties. Just like any other weapon or weapon systems, armed on crude aerial vehicles and missiles must not be used in a manner inconsistent with international humanitarian law. The continued and intensified attacks affecting civilians and civilian infrastructure are deeply concerning. All parties to any armed conflict have an obligation to protect civilians and to ensure compliance with applicable international law, particularly international humanitarian law. 
directing attacks against civilians and civilian objects, as well as indiscriminate and disproportionate attacks are prohibited by international humanitarian law. All such attacks must stop immediately. All parties to an armed conflict must refrain from any actions that could endanger civilians, including by avoiding the use of explosive weapons in populated areas, and ultimately should aim to take combat out of urban areas altogether. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, the United Nations will continue working towards a just and lasting peace in Ukraine in line with international law, including the UN Charter and all relevant General Assembly resolutions. I thank you very much for your attention.